She died in 1992. I was working as a journalist, and I was asked to do an investigation into what might have happened uh, to her case, and I and I did not do it. It was a year where uh, there were, as you see in the movie, it was a terrible year for death from violence, but also a terrible year from death for death from AIDS. And uh, AIDS is what consumed me that year. And I never did the story, and no one else did the story. And as a result, I've always felt a kind of a, uh, a unfinished business. And this year is the 25th anniversary of her death, and uh, so I thought it was time to go back and look at her. Yeah, we, we have to thank you and her for doing such an amazing investigation. <coughs> this, is, uh, this is something that was crucial to have, and so... Um, can, can I interrupt just for a moment, because yes. I realized, and I should have brought a piece of paper up, but Beverly, Beverly Tillery, Tillery is here, yes. who's yes. the executive yes. director of the Anti-Violence Project, and... organization with this 35-year history of doing incredible work in responding to crimes against gay people. And if it weren't for her forbearance and Victoria's uh, partnership in this, this collaboration couldn't have taken place. And thank you, Beverly, and thank you, everybody in your staff. I know many are here, and um, it's just been, it's been an incredible honor. Um, just go to the audience and I will repeat the question just to make sure that everyone hears it if they have it. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir. I'm only concerned. Uh, Victoria, uh, did you indeed retire or are you still here? No, I've retired. I don't think that I got <laughs> They flattered me with their sneakers. <laughs> I've retired. <laughs> And I came back for this particular project, and I'm so grateful to AVP to open up his doors so we can do this, because we all make a difference. Any other questions? Yes. Can you tell us about your red shoes? Tell us about, about your red shoes. Well, most of us got our red shoes yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. But I'll let um, uh, Victoria, who's our inspiration in so many things, tell about her sartorial well, red is my favorite color. And I went to uh, Macy's on 34th Street, and I was looking for a nice pair of shoes that I can wear in the snow and the rain. And I saw those, it was red sneakers. <laughs> and ever since then, I had to break them in. <laughs> but it's worthwhile. <laughs> it's a color, and they're honoring me with 
their red sneakers. I'm so Thank you. <laughs> we had another question right over here. I was trying to ask where you got the red shoes, but it's been answered. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> yes, next center. Uh, Victoria, do you think Michael Watt, the, uh, the doctor, had the proper conclusion? The medical examiner? The medical examiner? Yes. yes. He had the proper credentials. I thought he was, he answered the questions and we talk about the epidermis and you know, the skin layers, how they react. And once the body is in warm water, it starts to deteriorate much faster. So I felt really, you know, I, I felt good that he answered the questions that needed to be answered. What wasn't answered was why didn't the police investigate it further? Yes. There was some brief footage of the I believe so, and those kids were really dilapidated. Um, we looked at some books of peers at that time, and they were really in disrepair. So, you know, to me it makes sense. She, my, she was fearing for her life, and she was followed. What happened after that, only time will tell, hopefully. They were in this repair. Yes, sir. Have you heard back from the FBI? <laughs> Not as of yet. We, we called the FBI. <laughs> we called them, then they didn't have an answer machine. They didn't even have an answer machine, so uh, Victoria is sure that they, they've been defunded. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be the case, but yes. we did get a call, an unexpected call, yesterday from the district attorney's office, and they are, um, I think, because of the, some of the interest in the, the, the gotten in the newspapers leading up to tonight's board premiere. I think they thought better of not having um, resolved that case themselves. So they're looking at it again now. Yes, Senator. I just want to commend you on the, uh, the movie overall. Um, uh, for me, it was uh, enlightenment of um, something I did not know about. Um, I will say that after watching it, um, I feel like there probably will never be a resolution on how Marsha passed away. But with every tragedy, there's a positive side. And I think what you showed there um, for many people is that Marsha meant more than the death. The death rose her up and made her somebody, the movement. Many things came out of this that I can see. And from a person being in the Midwest, um, we view things in the Midwest differently, sometimes things shade it, and that I will say that I commend you, I commend the story of Marsha, and I commend the positive that came out of the story, that what she meant to this community, this gay community, and um, uh, being, being a white male with three children from the Midwest, and my son is up there, who I'm extremely proud of, um, I, I understood much more when he came out to me about the entire community and that we are a world of human beings and we are a world of love if we would just look at that. Mm -hmm. to go back and the need to stay in today and move forward with a rising epidemic of crime, especially against transgender women of color, um, the, the, uh, 
they, they're, they're almost pulling against one another, those instincts. And, uh, and clearly, the, the, the living people on the ground today deserve the attention uh, and, and the immediate response. So that's, that's kind of one issue. And, uh, and, and the other issue is that we, as this was a collaboration, as we've said, we were not, we were not um, law enforcement officials. And we, we didn't take this on in, in order to go and solve the case, really. It was a, a, re, a file review of what the ADP had accomplished in the past, and an investigation, really, about how that file was created and, and how it was transmitted or not to the police. So, so in that regard, we had kind of done what we could do, and we realized that having uncovered information that the police had never considered or had deep-sixed, that um, as Vicky came to the conclusion that, that we needed to go out of the New York City Police Department to try to find somebody who might be, come in and, and pay attention to it. So all we could do, really, right, is to pass it on. Unfortunately, four months have passed in this year, and already nine women of color, transgender women of color, have been murdered. So the war keeps on. We've won many battles, but we have to try harder. And we, the public, can make a difference. And on that score, can I just share with people that as you leave today, you're going to be greeted by an AVP staff person who will ask you to take one step to value <laughs> trans lives. Um, and we want to make sure that everyone takes the spirit of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera um, and thinks about ways that in our own lives every day we can value trans lives. Um, so when you when you greet when you see them and they greet you, please stop, talk to them, um, sign up to get more information about this work because our work is far from over. And the work of Marsha P. Johnson yes. continues in the form of new organizing movements. The Marsha P. Johnson Institute is a new organization committed to trans women of color, particularly black trans women. Eight of the nine trans women that have been murdered this year have been black. And so the work continues, rightfully so, and we're continuing to do so for our own community. So join the movement. Thank, Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you all so much for continuing to fight and continuing to use your voices. David, thank you for making such a beautiful film and such a beautiful technical <laughs>